Hey y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the fake, fake Ass Book Club. Wait, can we both say or no? Like after everything, like even if this hadn't been the craziest year ever, this it's was still stupid. like, it's like, it's, we're an accomplishment. Amen to that. Yeah. Like Antoine Fisher. Very much so. Okay, so this is episode one of the Fake Ass Book Club. Yay! <laughs> Today I'm we're so going to talk about um, Cola Booth's just uh, exhilarating autobiography, Diary of a Lost Girl. Uh, we chose this um, out of six books. We just spun the wheel because we couldn't make up our minds about what we wanted the first book to be about. Um, I've actually read this book before. Moni hasn't. That's so. No, I have not. Um, I, well, actually, now I've read it, but I hadn't read it previously. How and long did it take you to read it? Pro- I actually, technically, if I'm being honest, I haven't no, finished. No, no lie. Oh, Okay, well, I can't lie because okay, that's okay, my then shit. Be honest. Yeah, Go ahead so and be honest. I am almost done with the book. I'm I probably have maybe fifty pages left, so I'm mostly done. Okay, and that's where the fake ass part comes in. Thank we're you. gonna do this book club where neither one of us is finished. I haven't. Fi- I've read the whole thing before, right? But it's been some years, so I didn't completely finish rereading it either. So we've been. We would say three. What? How many weeks has it been? It's been about three weeks. Three I weeks. Would say, yeah. yeah. So it's what almost four hundred pages long. We right. did pretty good. I'm not. Listen, I'm proud of myself because I do have to make time for this, and that is why we're doing this podcast. I mean, it on a lot hard. of levels, it's about making time, uh, making time to connect with my friend Cat, yeah. and having a reason to talk to people I want to talk to. And um, it improves. Well, and I've always said this. I feel like reading is a form of meditation. Because you have to turn your narrative off to step into somebody else's, so it's deeply relaxing. And but except for the fact that her world is so traumatizing <laughs> that, like sometimes crazy. I would have to stop reading it because it's just like, okay, I'm just gonna go cry now. It's intense. I mean, honestly, it's very, very intense. It's and very so intense. We need we, to come up with a ready. To me, it does, this is the best autobiography to me I've ever read. It's definitely up there on my top five. I've read um, a couple of other really interesting ones, and I like them for different reasons, but this one stands out because her life legit transcends any sense of reality that I've ever had to, you know, I mean, like, we're talking, she, so she was adopted by a family after her family was well, wait, murdered. Wait, wait, before we can get we, into the breakdown, can wait, we before break we get into the body, yes, we're going to get into the body. <laughs> I want to talk about it. Let's start before she, even that part. Okay. So, like, uh, pro, oh, this was the thing, too, I wanted to do. So, kind of in the prologue dedication part, I want to dedicate this um, first inaugural podcast to my uncle, uh, who got me into books. Like, he was a reader his whole life, and he would recommend books to me, and he was really my first book club. Like, he would give me books to read, and me and him would talk about it, and he's no longer with us, but I think about him all the time, and he gave me a great gift of not being afraid to explore any topic, going into anything, like, not just stuff that's for black literature, because it's also a black-ass podcast, but, like, any type of book, like, we could talk about anything. So, um, this is dedicated to him. That's beautiful, and I knew him. He was... He was uh, definitely a learning man. Yeah, he was just, he was a sweet man, too. And I think that that's what I want to be to my kids. I don't know if sweet would be the right word. No, he was sweet. He was real. He He kept it real. He was caring because he was actually very spicy. But but that's what I like. I like the spice (laughs) because I like the realness of that. You know what I'm saying? But like everything that he, that's putting you up on game. That's what I want to do for my kids. So I feel like I want to dedicate this episode and all episodes really to just cultivating um, a love of reading and sharing stories with my children. And I want to say the very first person who got me reading books was like a babysitter. And she's an author now. I don't know if I can shout yes. her out. Um, her um, name is Sylvia Hubbard. She does like uh, fiction books. And I think she has her own publishing and everything. So she's amazing. pretty lit, but she was a college student. Oh, lit. I see what she, she did was there. lit. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. De bon tendra, <laughs> yeah. If y'all caught that. But um, yeah, she's just, she was the first person who really got me interested in reading books because you can, it's like you can leave and go somewhere without actually going somewhere. Yeah. And yeah, so it's just, it's a way to connect. It's a way to share ideas. Um, so yeah, I would like to dedicate this episode. I liked it. That was some good energy. Thank I like that. You. Yeah, that. Yeah. That, um, I think he would, this would make him happy. Like knowing that would. we're doing this. And, yeah, um, yeah, keeping this book reading going. But okay, so now back into this book. Okay, so... Where do we start? Should there just be a general synopsis? <sighs> so, it's so, so Cola Booth, um, Naima Bent Hearth is her, like, original name. And she's a Sudanese Arab woman who was raised in the United States, and this is her story. Um, and it's... 
to me, the fact that she isn't celebrated and talked about more is kind of... In, uh, go ahead. Uh, well... There's a reason why she's not being celebrated. I mean, because of who she is and because, I mean, the culture that she's from. So she grew up, uh, she doesn't even know exactly how old she was when her parents were killed, but she was um, adopted by... spoilers, by by the way. Sorry, yeah, my bad. Spoilers for the book. Like, if you want to read the book first before we talk about it, because it's wild. So just know, going into this book, we're talking about everything that happens. Right, and maybe because this is a fake-ass book club, some of y'all hoes ain't going to read it anyway. (laughs) Yes, this will be the Cliff Notes Because I struggled to get the shit done in three weeks anyway, so, but yeah. But, I mean, there was just a lot of, I mean, a lot of transformative stuff happening to her when she was young and just how that affected her, you know, her outlook on life and her blackness. And I think that's the main thing. Like, she's a dark-skinned black woman. Um, she's super tall. What is she, about six She's something? over six feet, I think yeah. she said. Like, yeah, she's she strikes a figure. Definitely. Um, but her life transcends reality. I mean, like, it's, it's very, like... I, uh, to the point where I couldn't believe what I was reading. Like, this does, this reads like fiction to me. Well, I've read some of her fiction, and it's not anywhere as wild as her real life. Right. It and feels it's like it's put on. <laughs> and it's and her fiction is incredible, too. She's Oh, my God. She's a fantastic writer, and but... <sighs> what was your favorite part? So, like, if there's... Oh, God. There's, uh, there's so many... <laughs> There's so many favorites. Uh, because I'm trash, my favorite part is the end of the book where she was talking about who has the biggest dicks. That's like, your that favorite w- yes, part? Yes, I'm trash. Oh I'm my sorry. God. I've never read, that's never been a part of any book First I've ever all, read. And, okay. And Fair I enough. like gossip. And it, 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 it was so funny to me. I'd never in my life had any, like, what? Well, she said she lost a bet, and that's why it was in there. Because she was kind of saying, so like... I'm so glad she lost that bet. She she made a bet, and somebody was like, you know, if if, if you don't win, you got to put it in the book. So she's like, so here it is. It's amazing. But you have to, like, get the, you have to get the book to get we the list. We can't tell them none of them. <sighs> well, so I, Can we I, give I'll them do... the first three? There's, like, 20 No, 20 no, not, people the, no not top three. Well, tell, you... them, tell them how it's cool Random them. How what? Oh, oh I know. So they can tell them to buy the book. They can't even buy the that book. That is true. You can buy the book on Kindle, but if you want an actual copy, like hard book copy of this book, it's very expensive because oh, yeah. it's out of circulation. Whenever I say something, repeat it back in there. Oh, sorry. So this book is very exclusive. <laughs> it is. I had to <laughs> work. So she had to give me her book because I didn't have it. And then when I was looking on Amazon, it was like a $90 or something because I guess it's not in print. So... But you can, you get, can get the Kindle, yeah, you can get the Kindle version for like 10 bucks, though. Right. But, um... It's good. You, like I mean... Like, her, her publisher was fire-mommed. Like, she's very... She pisses people like, off. Yes, she does. Can I... Hold up. And I don't know if this is super whack to just be reading this, but yeah, let me see. Whack it up. Let me see. We're in something. Okay, so it says that she's the daughter of the Arab-Egyptian archaeologist, okay, and his... Wait a minute. Her Roth? I don't see... I'm not about to try see. to say this man's name. <laughs> Okay, you're not about to have me out here struggling. Wait a minute. Oh, God. She has to take her glasses off to read it for the record. Harith bin Farouk and his only wife, Jidi, but he had a mistress. Sorry, sidebar. He did have a mistress with his kids, though. Is orphaned in Sudan and eventually adopted by black Americans Marvin and Claudine Prell Johnson of Washington, D.C. She grows up to become not only North Africa's most controversial and despised woman writer, but also the mistress to both Osama bin Laden and his mentor, Hassan al-Turabi, the two two most powerful terrorists on earth. And I mean, she if that don't get you hooked right there, that shit right there sounds and out of this world. It's like, wait a, a minute, what? side thing with uh, Al-Tarabi's son, too. Y- yeah, man, that touched. shit. Oh, my God, y'all. I mean, it's, see, I don't know how we talk about the book without me just spoiling the shit. Well, no, and it's you going to be spoiled. Oh, yeah, and this I'm last say- paragraph, of this, it's um, writing... Writing her life story with the same blunt sentences that have entrenched her classic poems and novels... Cola Booth talks openly about the hardships of having a quote unquote circumcised vagina, <sighs> about being put up for adoption by that. her color struck Egyptian grandmother, about the 2003 firebombing of her Ethiopian publisher, about Arab Islamic death threats issued against her life because of the soulful novels she writes, and about her efforts fight, fighting against slavery and genocide in the Sudan. A remarkable wi- memoir by Sudan's Sudan's most hated daughter. Right. So that's the that was on the cover jacket of the, here you can have that. Yeah, back. thank you. Yes. So yeah, that basically sums it up. That kind of gives you where we're going with all this. So she had a very <sighs> fascinating life. And I mean, I think despite everything, I mean she was able to still kind of 
carve out some sort of life for herself and her children because I think her kids and stuff were in hiding. Her and her kids. Well, like Once again, you... It, I, once again, going back to another book I read by Salman Rushdie, like, he wrote about his experiences when he was under Islam. He had a fatwa against him because he wrote a book that... And what's Arab a fatwa Islamic, for those who may not a know? A fatwa is, like, an Islamic declaration. Basically, it's like, that's when they ch- chop your head off. Damn. Yeah. That's really fucked that's up for reading a book. Huh? On the fatwa, it was. It was. Oh, my Sada- God. Yeah, Salman that Rushdie. That was on uh, yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm, mm-hmm. which I do love that show. But, yeah, Salman Rushdie, in his, uh, in his own memoir, because he wrote a book called The Satanic Verses. I tried to read that book. That book is very, very hard to read. And this is this is what's so funny, too. People never read the books. Like, I, the people who called for his head to be cut off never read that book. They just heard that it was insulting to Islam. Right. I it's never like, even got to this. the part that was supposedly insulting to Islam. It sounds like, to me, he just talks about the writing of the Quran in a way that wasn't favorable to Muhammad. I mean, that's the point. Like, you can't say anything and, you know, anything Head without off. them being, yeah. And it's like, hold on, no. And the fact that she's a woman and she has the audacity to speak her truth, though. And, and a very dark-skinned one as well. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh-uh. To the point where people were like, so you're... So why would a... Like, straight why up... Why would he like your black ahead ass? Of the story. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Because <laughs> <laughs> that... Connie Chung straight up asked her that. Like, Connie Chung. Connie fucking, she said, she's like that cross-eyed fucking And some of y'all probably don't know who the fuck Connie Chung is. Uh, Maury's wife. But, right, but Maury some people wife, probably don't right. even know who the fuck That's that is. True. But oh, he's everybody old, knows who Maury is. Oh, yeah, I guess he, you're not Maury the father. Yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all niggas know who that Maury is. Pilot, true that. His wife. Yeah, she was an actual journalist, though, for a long, long time. But right? it sounds like she wasn't a very good one. Well, I didn't say she was a good one. I just said she was <laughs> yeah, a fucking she was, journalist. she was a journalist. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's start at the beginning, because top okay. to bottom, there's just so much to talk about. Um, wait, unless you want to say something. No. All right. No. So uh, starting at the beginning of the book, when I, I actually really love the stuff about the, when she's actually in Africa, like when she's um, talking about growing up with both of her parents and the, it sounds like idyllic and beautiful. Yeah. Like, but the part that struck me, too, was that she I guess she was so young that she didn't realize her father was on heroin, on heroin. Though. Yeah. And well, so I was like, damn. Yeah. That's really fucked up. That is. But, I mean, given all the stuff that she's been through, that's not surprising. No. So can I talk about the murder? Yeah. <laughs> we get, well, I just wanted to set up that she had this kind of... Well, it wasn't exactly idyllic or anything like that. Her father actually bought her mother um, yeah. from her tribe. She was an actual, um, like, Nubian princess. Like, she said she was, like, inky black, like, just this... Beautiful, beautiful woman. Her her father saw her, fell in love, had to wait a couple years. Yeah, she was like really could. young, like 14 or something. She was crazy. Oh, actually, she was, was younger it? than that. Okay, maybe he was waiting for her to be 14. Something like that. Okay. Anyway. Read the book. It's read the book to get the mm-hmm. exact numbers. But um, he basically just purchased her from her tribe. And she, her mother was... Tell him why, though, because that's what I thought was interesting, too, because he was Egyptian, Arab, and he wasn't African. Like, he was obsessed with African people, though. He wanted to be a black man. And even though over here he would probably be considered colored or something like, like some type of person of color, over there he would be considered white. Like, Arabs are white over in Africa. I didn't know that. It was Osama bin Laden was considered white. That was super weird. We don't look at them like white. So European white is like how Americans perceive whiteness. That's the standard. And there, you know, because... Well, that's getting off the topic, but I was getting ready to go into whole Cleopatra colorism thing. Colorism is, but, but a, that's a heavy theme of the book, though. Yeah, colorism is yeah ripe within there. But yeah, I think that after her parents were murdered, though, they were murdered because why, though? Okay, so her father was actively fighting against the enslavement of black Africans of black in folks. Sudan because a lot of Arab people were keeping like black people as slaves. Right, right, right. And so... She didn't like that. No, no. She didn't like that. Her her father, basically, he was seen as basically like a nigger lover. Like, he would bring his wife around. They'd be like, why are you bringing... This black ass bitch. She wouldn't talk to nobody neither. No. Well, that was the thing that was interesting to me when she talked about her mother, that her mother basically refused to speak. Like, that was her protest her whole life because she was basically sold away from her people. Yeah, like, you have no control over your life as a woman in a lot of places in this world. I mean, and she's not... Is she in her... Is, is she 50 now? Like, was she in she her 40s when she read this? I mean, when she wrote, wrote this? this? I think so. So this isn't, like, a life... You know, a lifetime ago, this book came out, I think, in, like, 2006. Yeah. And to think that... You know what I mean? Like... That's still going on now. Yeah. That like, was crazy. Yeah, like, compulsory marriage and... 
it's it's very sad. So her mother sounds like she had a lot of dignity, at least. Like, she's like, I'm at least not. But it was sad for her because she ne- her mom never talked to her. She even said, was like, Daddy, make Mommy talk to me. And her dad was like, I can't make your mom do that. Like, it's bad enough that she was sold like a piece of cattle. Right, and like, that I bought her. I was the man who <laughs> actually, yeah, like, I pretty much was the one, like, yeah, I got to have it, though. Right, right. And so, I mean, that was kind of like, you're. I mean, you was involved, sir. Don't be trying to. Right, but that that was super sad. But also, too, she loved her mom. She called her mommy sweet, and she said she wanted to be like her mom. She wanted to be a housewife and just have kids and take care of them. Didn't go that route. Anyway, because we'll never get around to it. Can't do all the background, but basically her parents get killed one night um, after her dad got too mouthy with the local uh, militia, like uh, Islamic militia. And so she spent the whole night in the courtyard with the dead body of her parents, was sent away to live with her grandmother. Her grandmother's like, you're too dark. Yeah, so. they was trying to pass her off as the... Hell. Well, they would have tried to do that under normal cir- like circumstances. But she looked too much it like her like, daddy. It was like, you look like... Why? You look just like him. I can't even get away with that right. lie. And you're she too said, black. I can't come in here with mud on my heel. Like, where would I go? Colorism is so fucking toxic. It's, it's and that so was toxic. in Egypt. Like, yeah, her Egyptian... And, and what was interesting, though, was that's a part she kind of glossed over. I, put, I actually put that in my notes. Like, there's only two events that she said were too painful to talk about, which is crazy to me because her whole life is crazy. crazy shit. And that was being rejected by her uh, grandmother for being too dark. And when she had to leave her, um, um, the, the people from the Unison, family, yeah, yeah, Paula and Owen, when she had to leave them. And so there like, was like a little a part before she went to America where she was with them for yeah, a little while. with this white and couple. Then, and yeah. she didn't want to leave them. Yeah. But um, she said she was glad she ended up with the Johnsons in D.C. And so she has this sort of dichotomy of an African mind and also like a black American experience. And it's interesting to me because she was like, man, no, she's like, it's even though it's, like, super fucked up in the Sudan, like, at least they still have their, like, they're connected to their land and their culture. Right. She's like, it was, it's worse for black Americans because she put in there, she's like, every thought that they've had was thought by white people first. That's fucked up. It is. I don't like that myself. No. But that hits, I mean, but when you really think about that, though, when you think about the the consciousness of black people in America, it is very, you know, and I think a lot of that colorism bullshit that we experience here that's still relevant you know, stems from that. You know what I mean? It's internalized racism and all of it's based on getting as close to white as you can. You know what I mean? I just realized you didn't tell me your favorite part of the book. I, 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 what was my favorite part? Um, I really don't know. It's hard. You know, I'm indecisive. I don't know. I can't really say. I'm trying to think of what part you stopped because every once in a while, it's like, you would reach a seat. I'm like, do you um, remember the part where? I mean, because all of them are terrible, so I feel bad saying, like, that was my favorite part. You remember when she got gang raped <laughs> by them one guys <laughs> in the fucking thing? Remember well, that? No, like, not, I mean, there were. Um, because that happened. I'm trying to guys. think of a happy part. Because she does go into her love of cooking. You do get from the book that she's yes, had a love yes, affair yes. with food. And she puts recipes in the book, too. I mean, I think it's the way she wrote with that was my favorite. I think that she has a very poetic way with her language. So that's what ke- keeps me interested because she does like some of her poetry and stuff is in there. Um, just the way that she writes is really beautiful. It's very okay. colorful and descriptive. So I think I was more captivated by how she uses words more so. Because I mean, all of it, again, it all starts running together. Like yeah. ev- everything that happened to her. Um, from, again, the gang rapes to... Oh, wait, okay. I, I made a note of all the stuff. I'm I just going to keep saying gang rapes. <laughs> it's not funny, Kat. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because gang rapes... Gang rapes is, are not funny, you guys. They're I, not funny. I am officially coming out as saying I do not, not think gang rape is they're funny. Not. But jokes about... No. We have to... Listen, we... we comedy not, is there no, for a reason. Don't get me canceled off the bat. I know. I'm going to say, like, one of the things that... I made a list of stuff that I had forgotten about in the original reading of it. Okay, yeah. And so one of the things that was crazy to me was when she was living with that Ethiopian family in London. I forgot. See? See? It's like I never read it, y'all. And I did. But it's so crazy because it was a short part of the book. But if you think about it in the mind of a child. So she went to go live with this Ethiopian family in London before she came to America because they were trying to settle her there. But the Ethiopian family called her a witch. 
Her and black ass. Because she was so smart. They were like, no girl is this intelligent. She's obviously possessed and right. is a witch. And she made me cheat on my wife. That I was going to say, <laughs> wasn't there some fuck shit involved? I remember there distinctly. And then how fucking dare you, sir, blame that on a child? He sure did. You fucking they piece of shit. Her, Are you kidding they me? There's a special shit place. Up, put her on the curb and said, come pick her up. She made me fuck now, this. Think, but think about, how, think about how stupid the wife had to be. I mean, the listen. Wife, the wife, the you wife wanted to, be, to believe that the, yeah, the, the wife had, yeah. the wife wanted wanted to believe that lie because that was easier for her, to, easier th- mm-hmm. to, than to the reality that he ain't shit. But <laughs> but also keep in mind, too, because I don't even want to judge her too hard because she's stuck in London as an Ethiopian woman under the protection of this man, and if he leaves her, she's ass out. Man. The yeah, the, the, wi- the, yeah. The, Ethiopi- the Ethiopian wife. Not saying that that's to be justified, but I can come at it because I do know I have yeah, a certain privilege yeah. of being here and being a woman Because I know money's America. just going to come. I can make right. money. I can yeah, I'm here in America. There's laws. You're not going to take my kids. Because that's the other thing that Man, they, they do could... a lot of times over there, too, is they get get these girls having kids so young. And then, um, and actually, that is a part of Sharia law. Like, the dude just gets the kids. That like, is wild. And you can see them when I say you can see them. So, yeesh. So, but I mean, not that, that it would have been like that necessarily in London, but their situation, the fact that they believe in witches just shows that they're a little limited. Um, yes, I, that's a nice way to put it. I really see. That's why I fuck with you. That's but nice. That's, but was, I, I would say it in a way, uh, like, way harsher. But yes, but, yes, but, limited. But it, it doesn't help our protagonist. Like, her point of view as a child, very young, because what at this point, she's maybe nine, maybe right, eight or she nine. she doesn't even know exactly. Yeah, how old she is. So they they immediately have to place her again. And it's it's very fortunate she was placed in the family that I she was. She had a heart attack when she was a child. Yeah. I mean, as a result of that, she... Oh, well, that because that's the other huge thing. Name of Sorry, this book spoiler. is the fact that she's uh, uh, a, a survivor of female circumcision. Oh my god! Which and is <laughs> y'all have to just because we can't make the whole episode about this. But like, yes. I have read a whole book about female. Uh, my first entry Alice into Walker. it was Alice Walker's Possessing the Secret of Joy, and she she covers it very well. The different types, how it's different from region to region, how it's used. What it's for is just controlling women across 100%. the board. No matter how they do it, it's for controlling women. But she. Um, she's a survivor of it, and her American family, when they gave her a bath for the first time, they freaked out when they saw her private parts because and they had been speak mutilated. English, mind you, and she didn't either. speak English yet, so they're freaking out and they're taking to the hospital. She's thinking she did something wrong and has a heart attack. Oh she's my God. also uh, molested by a family friend of theirs who her father beat the brakes off of him. I like that part. That's what's up, pops. I yeah, respect that. Um, and, and believed her because her adopted mother had been in a situation where she had been um, abused by, I think, her pastor, and nobody right. believed her. Can we just talk? We'll see. See, this no, is, these are the tangents. But Moving the, on. No. Just fucking <laughs> rapes and shit, man. Like, that like stuff not. is so prevalent. Like, it's just, I mean, child abuse and kids getting touched. I mean, that affects your life forever. Your you know what I'm life. saying? It, it th- That shit's fucked up. But anyway. Yeah. So, so, and, and it happened quite a bit. Like, before she actually matured, she... Because um, then another family friend um, also just straight up raped her. Like, the first yeah. one just molested her, but he didn't enter her. And then another family friend actually uh, raped her when she was 14. But she thought she was in love. And we know Some how R. that Kelly goes shit. if you watch the R. Kelly documentary, how grooming works. Oh, my God. And <laughs> eventually she... I think before she even turned 18, she ends up going to Africa, back to Africa. Yeah. To I think, have, like, northern. Because she wanted to be a star. She wanted to make... She was in, she was in movies, uh, like a bunch of B-movies and stuff like that. She was, like, kind of an international party girl. Yeah. And that's where she... Ran, oh, and then that was another in my notes, too. I forgot that she was at a party with Muammar Gaddafi, and he almost raped her. And <sighs> almost forgot that. <laughs> just really, little tidbit, you know, another rape. And just, wow. just an, well, that was an attempted rape. She Excuse didn't me. actually tempted. get raped Semantics. that time. Um, and then later on... Because, yeah, I wouldn't want to pin an unfounded rape charge on Gaddafi, so right. let me Right, there's not. a lot of book before we actually even get to the Osama bin Laden part. Because, honestly, I read her book because I found out that she was Osama bin Laden's former mistress. And I and I always just... The mistresses always have the best stories. Like, uh, that's what's up. Because they, they get the real. Yeah. And so I when I... When I saw that, I'm like, I have to read this book. And then I had no idea what I was getting into. I never heard of Cola Booth. Like, you would think that more people had heard about her. But I hadn't until you had said something to me about her. Well, she gets into, too, about the smear campaign to sort of suppress her voice later on. But, um... She's not American, so why would would they care? Well, once she was here, um... I mean, even if she was. Yeah. No, no, name me, name me any foreign woman that... 
American women care about? I mean, I care about a lot of them, but no, none of them that uh, yeah, generally you, are yeah, cared you're, about. You're a bookworm. I am a bookworm. She's a, you are a bookworm. Internationally, but yeah, yeah, like technically. Technically, women, especially women here, they don't care about the, the women. Right, right. I mean, yeah. right. If, if, if people don't care about what doesn't affect them directly. Sure. And well, I think that's a lot of the time. They don't care about you. Yeah, right. I mean, of course. So she's foreign of course. and black. Yeah. So that's two strikes against exactly. her. Exactly. Because foreign... black folks don't even care about you. They once, don't. Yeah, they at sure a certain don't. point. Not even a little bit. No. So, uh, but, well, and especially if I'm speaking out against something they don't like, because she's very 100%. outspoken against Christianity. She's very outspoken against Islam. She's very outspoken against white supremacy. Um, Which is why they tried to bomb, then they bombed her publisher, because uh, that's, yeah. people don't want to hear that Osama shit. Osama bin Laden, at one point, after she started writing her books, he called her when she was in Spain and was like, if I had the time, I'd come and slit your throat myself. Man, the whole, <laughs> the whole interaction with him, that shit was crazy, that man. Was, Just that whole. Rereading that. And once again, now that I'm old, it, like, it, it, it is a wonderful thing to go back and read books you've read before. Because you that. get something more because I've lived more. And now I, I understand so much more of what was going on there. Especially since, like, I've read more about, oh, because I've read, like, a, she was talking about Carmen Bin Laden's book. A lot Which in, is a sister-in-law or something? Oh, Osama Bin Laden's sister-in-law. And okay. a lot of her stuff. But she, she doesn't seem to care for her very much. But well, I guess not. Because, I mean, basically, I'm out here... Telling all your family's fucking business. Like, you don't tend to enjoy those motherfuckers. Well, like, she was saying she never really met any of his other wives or family or anything like that. She was in the mistress world. Like, she wasn't officially in his world. She Because he's still going around. Like, we all know his thing. He was like Mr. Islam. So what are you doing having sex with this infidel American black woman? Black. I like black. how she put the black Well, because that's there. why no one believed her when she said, yeah, I was his mistress. It's like, well, why would he want a black mistress like seriously though that's how people act though like you don't you know what i mean and she's like you know and she would go but off break them. down because he didn't he say why he wanted to find because well, he was like stalking her yeah okay so let's go back to oh she's God. in north africa and how she meets osama bin laden please and, okay so when do you want to say no. i feel like i've been talking a no, lot i need you to because <laughs> i'm just I, I like being the wingman over here all right pleasing hearing you speak Mm. It's very nice. It's very pleasing hearing you speak. Thank you. It's very pleasing. I talk a lot. You have, so a, nice, I have a lot listen, of experience. We talk, listen, we'll be here. I have a lot of yes. experience. But go, no, you go ahead. So she's um, she's out on a date one day, just living her best life. And I want to say she was in Cairo. She it was Egypt? somewhere in North Africa. Somewhere in North Africa. Remember exactly. In a cafe, out with this, like, I would have imagined super player? fine. Soccer players tend to be super fine. Well, if so nothing else, he was in shape. So he we know in, he, he had was, something going on. He was for a him. black soccer player, yeah, so he was probably, he was probably pretty good looking. And so Asama and his boys come in and are just like, you're. They drag him out, her date out, and they're just like, come over here, you know, if someone wants to talk to you. And she's like, fuck off. And she ends up, he ends up smacking her. And Can she, you imagine? No. And then she Can takes, you imagine? No. Smacked I, her like a pimp, like straight up. Bitch, just, I'm right, just here having fucking, are you serious? Because she started smacked? crying because she was, she was so upset. She's like, is he okay? Because... And and the people fuck? and she says people are like, why didn't you call the police? It's like, girl, they Bitch, are the police out here. Like they're all right. Like I'm a woman. This like is I'm a out gang. here looking like a whole hoe <laughs> at this uh, cafe on a date and shit. You know what I'm saying? They're and, like, and she probably deserved women. it. Right. right? How dare it's you like, come out here and you're with gonna... your titties out, <laughs> drinking coffee and shit? And she does have huge titties. She does. Like it, That's it, why it, I it, it. They're on the back of the book. They like she has a very yeah. She has a picture of just bare chested. But she says it's a tribute to her Neolithic ancestors because. That's how they went around. There was no shame. It's like, right. what? It's like they would, that's how they honored God was praying in the water, bare chest. I'm like, I love it. Anyway. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it now, though. I would. I can see how that would be very, if it's warm. I mean, who's there? Like, I don't Other know. Other women. It would just know. be all women who would just go It's just go weird. And, I don't know if I want right, that. Fine, but, I mean, fine. it sounds good. I just don't. I would we be on the side. You out of the I'll hand you a towel when you come out and shit. And like, here you go. Here's some lotion. So you don't get ashy. <laughs> Shea butter. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, but basically she, but, and this is the part I forgot too, because I thought like the, after that interaction, that's when he took her off to um, Khartoum in that like, fancy hotel or whatever he put her up in but she ran home she, right 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 and she like she actually ran away the first time ran home but he had been stalking her so she knew where she he knew, knew where she, where she lived. lived and he came to her apartment raped her and then oh a couple God. was it days later came and yeah it was a couple days later when her roommate was there came back got her and made her go to Khartoum and put her up for a couple months and that's like really posh hotel a lot of uh, rape and mental abuse she eventually gets and it turns out she got out, some jewels in the end she 
well, and listen, I've read so For many. For y'all out here who like to catch the bag and I've all that so, shit. I like, love a good hoe <laughs> memoir, and I've read enough where, like, a lot of the, and I don't mean hoe derogatory, like, no, you, I mean, you hey, like, make your money. Winning. And it's like, a lot of them, when they talk about when they've dealt with, like, Middle Eastern men, it does go like that. They usually give you about $250,000, a Rolex. To, like, and shit then, on you and stuff, though. They, well, like, they but, be into some kinky shit. Well, not, uh, listen, that's just word on the street. I mean, th- listen, th- I don't you, know you from have personal to earn experience. money. So you're not just going to be able to sit Getting around and flew be- out to <laughs> have somebody take a whole dump on it's your like back they're out or here something. For conversation. Yeah, no, so, definitely not. But it was interesting when she said that because I'm like, oh, that is in keeping with everything else I've heard about how Middle Eastern gentlemen handle these sort of affairs. Oh my and gosh. so, um, but yeah, while she, but it turns out he really was only liking her. Not well, I think he was intrigued by her, just her, but also the fact that his best friend was in love with her. And about her anatomy. Didn't, I mean, oh, I feel like that, a lot of men in that region know that women, where, she, where she's from, like uh, South Sudan, that they are circumcised, circumcised. and the byproduct of that is a super tight vagina, right. which men seem to enjoy a lot. A lot. Don't know if y'all know that about a guys. A lot. Okay, so, but it's like you're super excited because you're like, okay, I know. Right, she's, she's infibulated. Circum- I think one. Infibulated, one, that's the word. One of the men who was raping her one time said it was glorious. He was like, oh, brother, it's glorious. It glorious. Yeah, when she, one of the times like, she was getting game raped. Up. One of the the times, one of the many one times. One of the times she was getting gay. It's too much. I can't. It, well, and it's amazing that she's still in her right mind. Quite honestly, like I've heard an interview with her not too long ago on YouTube, and she still seems pretty sane. Like, yeah, it, given everything that's gone on. But except I'm not enjoying her wigs choices, though. I don't. I mean, like I mean, if how you're just... she's styled, but you know. Like, yeah. I'm just saying I the fact that it. she's not in an insane asylum. Because a lot of times, to- like I said, I've read a lot of books. So a lot of times the people who've been through what she's been through, they, they, they're they not okay. No. Like, not, especially not enough to write books. No, you're right. I mean, definitely she's a survivor. I mean, I got a lot of respect for her, especially because she had more to lose by speaking her truth. I mean, people don't tend to you know, want to respect a woman's voice, especially when she's, you know, ta- I mean, everything she's talking about is woman, women empowerment and, like, having agency over your own body and being able to make those kinds of choices and stuff. And I, culturally, that's just not a thing that I feel like a lot of, especially, like, you know, in Islam, I mean, there's no you, there's no autonomy. Um, and then that translates here, too. I feel like a lot of, I mean, a lot of a woman's life is defined by men and the men in their lives, whether or not you're procreating or having kids. Um, or if you're married or single or whatever. So, um, yeah, but I mean... Cause it'll be, her, yeah, because it's like, oh, she's single. That's so sad. Yeah, it's like, is sad. it though? Right. Like, bitch, I don't have to cook. I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. There's no expectations on my time. Like, that's not always a bad thing, but you don't get rewarded for that. You looked no. at like, okay, something's wrong with you if you ain't trying to be cooking somebody dinner every fucking day. Like, it's some kind of well, prize or something. I, in the interview that I listened to, she was talking about how she doesn't like the idiom about how, like, or is it, I don't know if it's an idiom, what are the mm. saying, like, the truth will set you free? And she was like, yeah, my no. experience, it does not. Like, people don't want to hear the truth. Um, it will keep I you mean, boxed in. I mean, lies are more fun. They are more fun. I mean, look at right now. Look at right now. It is you more fun to, well, because this is the thing about narrative, and this is why I think it, why reading is important. So you hear a lot of narratives because for one, you start noticing patterns. And secondly, you'll notice that, oh, my perception, my because this also just blew up my whole perception of what race is. Because I, You know what? I will say that too. Because I was questioning my own blackness after reading this book. I was like, well, very damn. You would not be black in I, Africa. Bitch, I, uh, Michelle Obama wasn't black when she went no, to she visit wasn't. her. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that book too because Michelle Obama becoming, is, yeah, yeah, she's pretty she amazing. Was, but that was, and, and and actually, even she's not even totally considered black in Africa, Kolobu. Right. No, she's biracial. Even though, barely. like, over here, she's super she's black. black. Like, yep. uh, who would you... This sounds terrible. Like, who would you say she's as black as? Um, she blacker than... No, <laughs> um, or just exactly as black as. Um, <laughs> right, right. Maybe well, like Grace Jones. Jones. She talks about Grace Jones yeah. in the book. Yep. Like, because she got into a fight with one of her adopted sisters about, like... Her adopted sister is like, what? How do you think she's pretty? And it's like, I think she's beautiful. Like, she's... <laughs> Don't she even get me well, into that. because that was the thing. Um, Cola said she didn't even believe Grace Jones was Jamaican because she looks so Nubian. Like, she's oh, like, yeah, she that's actually right. looks Nubian. Yeah. And, yeah, just that. I'm trying to think. Cola Booth is... She's probably... I'm looking at her picture right now. She's as dark as, let's say, Angela Bassett. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So she's picture that. It, or just Google her. 
There, yeah, booth. there's that. Um, <laughs> you'll internet. probably see some titties, so there's that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, her... Okay, so Asama... Yeah, because he was basically well, yeah, kind of playing like, mind games. Can go through the whole book, go, though? Just, 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 just skip through okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, get, get to the mind, get to the bobby, get to, the, get to all of these things. Oh, God, yeah. He said, get to the bombing. That's why you have to... Get to the bobby, get to the mic, get to the all of these things. Oh, I can't stand you. Okay, got you. Robbie, bombing. I was like, bombing? Oh, there were But there were bombings. But there were bombings in there, though. That's why, you know, I get to be literal. Oh, and bombings. Because that was the other thing. That's what you mentioned. Um, Theo Van Gogh. Yes, and he got marked with like a... So wasn't he working with another... We read a book called The Infidel. Yes, thank you. Okay, so Ayan, yes. Ayan Hirsi Ali. Ayan Hirsi Ali, yes. I'm proud of myself for remembering that because I'm I have a trash memory. Too. Thank you. That, but once again, she's extraordinary. It's hard oh to not God. remember her. Very similar story. I would say a little bit um, maybe more refined than Cola Booth. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, she's... But similar stories in the way of like coming the from same, an the Islamic same stuff. background. And yes, their stories were the same and just the same. They try to oppress those stories because nobody wants to hear that nobody shit. Nobody wants to hear that shit. And they just want to hear because here's the a thing. Filmmaker, right? I don't because this might sound very anti-Muslim for a while, and I'd want to say like I'm not anti. I love Muslim people. It's just Islam itself, it, like Christianity, has some real problematic stuff when it comes to women. Amen to that. So that's what I'm criticizing. So if if you hear anything critical about Islam, it's not directed just know toward. that I'm. It's not directed towards any group of people. Because right. I love Mus I love people. In general, and, yeah. and Muslims are a part of that subset of people. Okay, so wait, where were we? Oh, we were Islam. talking about we were oh, actually Ayan, because that her story was basically her story her her memoir, which was also very fabulous, even though I still like Cola's more, was about her basically trying to get out of her arranged marriage. Yeah. And also sleep? being a survivor of female genital mutil mutilation. But they both knew that man, the Vincent. Um, what is oh, his name? Oh, because uh, Ayan screaming. made a, a YouTube video with him called Submission. Okay, yes. That's how that's she got her was. fatwa. Because oh Ayan also had a fatwa. Because she had the audacity. And had to live under protection to say, and it was actually a real, I watched the video. It's very interesting. It, um, it had a nude woman who was veiled and she had different Islamic scriptures written all over her body. And she was having a conversation with Allah about like, why are the laws like this? Like, why as a woman do I have to submit under this harshness? Right. And she, and Theo Van Gogh helped her make that move, that that film and that's why they killed he him. Killed, yeah. But I love the fact that she thanked him in that book, in her book, her book and yeah. believed her because he's been going, he's like, I know what you're going through because they're coming after me too. Right. And now eventually, you're lover, basically. they killed him and also I believed like, um, it was in I the think, middle of the street and they yeah, stabbed him and left like daylight. a note on his chest. Yeah. I was like, is this stabbed a note. It was real barbaric. Life? It was crazy. Damn. Like, did yeah. they just, be, I mean, to the point where like, we're so sheltered, y'all. We are so <laughs> lucky. We are so blessed. Whatever you want to call that. The fact that I don't have to wake up and Think about, you know, I can come on, like she's on this podcast and talk, talk that shit. Talk hard and, shit. Yeah, talk hard shit, but also, too, respectfully, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I don't have to worry about when I leave here, somebody's following me around or uh, insinuating that I'm, uh, so, I, I, you know, I'm married or whatever. Like, oh, you were... You were at a man's house? Uh, what? You, yeah, like... You escorted? Where were you your were, male escort? Yeah, like, so wait, you drove the car... Wait, you drove the car oh, there? Lord. Like, I mean, I'm just saying I'm I'm grateful to not have to be in a situation where um, I have to, I you know, I, there is some kind of control over my objective reality that I have. And it's not necessarily tied to a man, even though, you know, there are social stuff that in, in, will indicate that. But for all intent and purposes. Yeah, you wouldn't be, it's not, it's not. Chained your survival, right? No, it's not chained to my survival. Yeah, exactly. Like you can I can get survive a bank account, without a man. You can get a lease. You right. can get a mortgage without being like, well, now, "Where is your male protector?" That had to be legislated in. That did. Shout out to but Ruth Bader Ginsburg for that thank one because she went hard on that shit. Yeah. So, she, rest in thank peace. you. Yeah. yeah. Once she's, again, she's it does. You do get gains, so like you can have all those things. But yeah, um, just the once again, like going back to Cola's booth, Cola Booth's book. Um, her escape from Bin Laden was interesting because didn't she stab a guy while she was? Yes, she did. <laughs> she did. She stabbed somebody. Um, because um, yeah, somebody because they were so disrespectful to her while she was living with Osama in this hotel. Um, one of I can't even remember the exact situation. I don't know, but she did. She did stab him. She did have to. And nobody said anything. No, she got out. She like, got the fuck out of she, there with her stuff and leave. I don't know. 
I never. I don't remember. I don't either. That's I hope wild. That he, I mean, because I, like, oh. I, I can't remember exactly what he did to her, but I remember Osama got her out. Of, she did get locked up, but he got her out of jail. Right. And was like, you know, they shouldn't have disrespected you in your house. I'm sorry, and all this other stuff. It's like. Wow, but she wasn't eventually... She up, wasn't he upgrading, though, to another Yeah, he was getting style? a French... He a wanted French to one. a French yeah. mistress. So it was and time so for her to leave. It was time anyway. for her to leave. And so he gave her... Well, I guess it wasn't $250,000. It was twenty five k. I think he some, gave and her... And some, like, really intricate jewelry that she sold jewelry or something, I guess. And all this other stuff. And um, she bounced and... I don't think did she directly come back to America. Now the timeline's getting fuzzy. See, this is why I'm not leading it. Because this is I why I should have I should have put that in the notes. But she ends up back in America and is trying to b- make a career as a writer. And she really didn't want to tell anybody she was connected to Osama bin Laden because she hated him. But like, as soon is, as people would find out, that's all that they wanted after to make 9/11, the book about. Yeah. And it's really sad too because uh, she ends up finding him. I love how she calls her baby father Aquaman. Yeah, she does call him. I like that a lot. But she basically fell in love, had um, two sons with this beautiful, like, man. And um, Did you ever see pictures of this man? No. Just the way she described him? Just the way she described him. I mean, he would have to impress her. I imagine he would have to be phenomenal. I want to because I she said she ran up, up on the curb. I know that was like wow, that was bold. She was she very basically bold. he was jogging and she just like stopped her car in front of him. Like yeah, hey, like hey, what's you're, up with you're you with me now. Yeah, you're with me now. He's like we we go together. <laughs> we go together. We go together now. And then the fact that his friends didn't like her because they thought she was too dark for him. Mm-hmm. That was once again that just keeps coming up. It's, <laughs> it's a constant theme. And it was funny because I was having a conversation with my grandmother the other day and. My grandmother, she's got dementia, but we can still talk sometimes. And she was saying that um, when my uncle's, when my my uncle brought his wife to meet his grandmother, she was like, she thought my aunt was too light for my uncle. I think she is too. Yeah, she was too light As for my uncle. As a very dark skinned woman myself, <laughs> which is a lie. This is funny because <laughs> I'm clear. Is very, very yellow. Yeah, but no, uh, but only, but not in the summertime. Oh, I can get brown. You can get tawny. Don't sleep on you me because... You can get tawny. Uh, right now, though, it's winter and it's yellow. Yeah. But, like, I was telling my grandmother, like, with people like that, it, you're never the right color. True like, that. if she'd have been dark, oh, she's too black. And it's like, and then you bring somebody like, she's too light. It's like, you, you're never, you're never the right winning. shade. Of, you're never you're winning. You're never black enough. You're never... It's never enough for people who are true. color struck. This is true. So, but it's interesting that that kept coming up. But, like, yeah, she ends up meeting this man, trying to have a writing career, just trying trying to raise her family and... Okay, you have to take over now. I feel like I'm talking way too much. No, you're doing great. I but no, this. what happens next? I'm still throwing you the ball. I got to rest. Okay, well, I don't remember. Okay, so let's see. So she did all of that. Um, and at some point, because even before she met him, remember, didn't she end up having a breakup with a boyfriend? Oh, she wait. She had a... Bo- what about the gang rape of the S? Who are the the? Um, oh, when she bought the Sunni's she, army. She was, See, yes, this is why Sunni's I needed army. you to jump in. Listen, yeah. okay, yeah, because I remember uh, she ended up being a part of this group that was supposed to be advocating for the um, the Sunni's Liberation the, the, Army. The, yes, the Sunni. So she was like a. Pri- what do you call it? A secret agent? Yeah. So she was a secret like they agent. Like later on, the bitch shoots guns. Listen, and... <laughs> right, I know. And she had to get, like, gang raped into Yeah, she got... The, uh, yeah, jumped in. Yeah, I was like, in. oh, my God. Why is that always a fucking thing? It's like, if you have a vagina, we need access to it. So even if we're trying to liberate, air quote, liberate, we still... We if still you're coming together. around... Uh, well, I, one of the things that kept going around and around in my mind, like, for the past couple of weeks is just how political sex is. Like sex is how so? I mean, I mean, explain to like, me. What you mean. Well, just because once again, everyone is so preoccupied about what women are doing with their bodies that, like, who whom you choose to have sex with, like, it, it's almost political in a way. Because a lot of times people we'll be like, oh, well, why are they sleeping with them, or why are they sleeping with and them? And why do you or, care? Yeah, but it's just this weird thing of like, okay, well, we can work with you now since we've all had sex with you, right? Because it was going to be a distraction, really, exactly, up until this because, point. And, like, and almost there is almost a practical practical reason for that too. So that they're not in competition for who gets to sleep with her. Oh, my God. Like, is that practical? I mean, I'm not saying it's... Right, okay, in real life. Yeah, because that's not really practical. Like, that's really fucked up. Um, it's... But, but, I mean, I guess if you're a savage man... I mean, I, get, I, don't, I don't understand that mentality. Like, I can't be... But, again, we have a whole culture that, like, we... I mean, the idea behind um, having... <laughs> He wants to get on the mic, he y'all. Does. The baby wants to speak. He knows this is lit. Oh, get on the I'm mic. So happy. Whoop, whoop. 
he was smiling too. He's proud of himself. Yes. He was like, and that's like, my yeah. contribution. And just so you know, this is And then he my, dropped the mic. Just right. so you guys know. Daddy. Yeah, but I just feel like, <laughs> why is there... Um, is it that hard? Yes, apparently. Is that hard? Well, I feel like like with everything to be we learned about woman me and not too, like be in like these workplace either. situations and stuff like that, yeah, apparently it is. That shit is wild to me. I think back of when I was younger and how I was treated in certain situations and stuff, I let slide. And why? You do. You know, you let certain stuff because it's just like, oh, well, I don't want to make it a thing and I don't want it to, you know, you just You're go You're socialized along. to feel like some of it is normal. You know what I'm and saying? That's like, true, too. You know, men are just fucking creepy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's the that's I remember I was message. working at this uh, when I was working at Alter Ego. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, you did not bring up that at the mall. I remember one day, like it was urban fashion, urban fashion, and I remember my manager just slapped me on the ass, and I was like, "I just that's not kept funny." It pushing. <laughs> Precious D, you not know funny. what? In his defense, I had just done a really good job. Oh my God, no! And don't touch me. I don't like that. Right, don't it's fucking crazy. touch me. Like now, I've been like, you know, what the fuck like, is you doing? Right, it had been an issue, but then it was just like you just let stuff I don't slide. Make it a bit, I, right, when you're younger, for for sure, I will say you do let more stuff slide because you're still finding your voice and feeling comfortable. But and you don't want to make it a thing. But now I'm like, oh, it's a thing. Yeah. I didn't make it a thing. You slap my but ass. You're, but people are always mad at the person who brings up that right. it's a problem, though. And which is a theme in this book. Like whenever she brings up, because even when. Um, she starts open because at first when she was confronted about like, are you Osama bin Laden's former minister? She was She's like, lying no, about it. No, which I respect. Yeah, like I'm just gonna lie She's like, because no, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah, I know personally I've done that a lot. Um, it never <laughs> works out. <laughs> That's funny. It never works okay, out. Okay, so. I forgot. I don't know where I'm at. This is almost the end of the show. Yeah, that's what we used to call it. Like this is almost the end of the show because this this is almost the end of the show. Yeah, we're gonna have to bite into this book some more. Yeah, there's so many good parts. I I I basically feel like at this point we kind of have to stop and just wrap it up. But this book overall to me was super entertaining. You have everything from. You know, her life in Africa, in America. I mean, she just has such a diverse experience in her life, and I feel like. Again, it just transcends anything. I mean, I've never... I I still have a hard time believing that it was real. You know what I mean? But, I mean, she does talk about in her book that she's been verified. Like, even in the back of her book, she has people where um, she's done speeches and stuff. Oh, yeah, Fox News tried to discredit her and actually ended up proving her story right. Right, exactly. So she's been certified. They were like, this chick is lying. It's like, oh, no, she actually did this. Oh, can I put one more part, too? Yeah. About, oh, did we already talk about it? About Mike Tyson giving her money for her kid to go to private school? This was just so random. This is just one of those things that's just... I already love Mike Tyson, but it's just one of those things that makes me love him more because she's like, I'd never met him. Like, he just heard about what was happening to me and sent her, like, $7,000 because uh, the press was stalking her son at school. Can you imagine if this was happening now, though, with how the Internet is? It would have been, like, we probably would have heard about her at that point. Well, she if was it's the Internet media. and stuff like that. Yeah, she pr- maybe. They would have found her ass, and they would have made sure that she was... Yeah. You know, found or whatever. But I do think that her life is fascinating. And I think that if you love a, I mean, if you love drama, I mean, she's got sex in there. If that's what you're into, I mean, there's some love. She's got poetry. I mean, it's, it's just like, a. It sounds like the Shonda Rhimes version of Superhead. It is. Shonda Rhimes version, Rhimes version of Superhead. Rhymes Shot it. And some, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, would. Because she's, she's not going around using sex, but people are using. She kind of was though. She was. She at, said at she point. was like, yeah. A, she was like, yeah. I was. She was like, I would use. She was my leveraging inf- her her sexuality her sometimes. For Johnny to bend. She would lie well. all the time. She would always yeah. say uh, lie to guys and be like, yeah, I'm a virgin. Yeah, because cause she was, she was so like, tight. yeah, because I mean. <laughs> And she talked about how painful it was, though, to really be penetrated because it was just like. And the fact that she didn't want to have the procedure undone because it connected her to our mother. Yeah. I was. I thought that was fascinating. Which is why culture can be toxic because I mean, when you really think about being like attached to something that's detrimental to your physical health, or but that's that's, a big theme of possessing the secret of joy. Yeah. So we got to get on that one too. Yeah, that That was was the major theme of that about how toxic this sort of. Because I understand, like, I want I myself want to be connected to the black. African part of me. But, but not if it includes t- removing parts of my no, vagina. I'm sorry. No, like, I don't want that. I, but I also very, it's like, yeah, that's very Fuck important that. to me. So it's like, no, nah, I wouldn't want to go that far. But at the same time, like, it, it's hard because 
in a lot of the areas where they're trying to stop female genital mutilation, it's white people coming in and saying, you need to stop doing this. And right. of course, there's a resistance Nobody to that, that because y'all been coming in here forever telling us what to do. Right. And it's like this. And honestly, the practice of female g- genital mutilation, it goes back thousands of years. Like there's even speculation that Cleopatra was, was circ- I mean, well, do you call it fe- circumcised, well, circumcised, I know genitally that sounds, mutilated, yeah. but like, you know, the shorthand is um, FGM. Okay. That's, and that's why the procedure, like cesarean, is oh named after her son. See, because they had to do that procedure to get the baby out because she couldn't pass push through push her that is crazy. infibulated vagina. So, well, if you like stories about infibulated <laughs> so, vaginas, in summation. In summation. Yeah, if you if you are ready, it's heavy. It's not a light read. It's, it's something you have. It's meaty. Definitely. But I think that if... It's an easy read, though, as far as, like, I mean, I feel like the font, I mean, I don't know if, if people care about this. Like, if you're not really a reader, it's not like the words are really small. Like, I feel like when you open the book, you're not intimidated to read it. And so, like, me, it took us, it took me three weeks. I mean, being a busy mom, working full time, like, it can be hard, but it's nice because it takes, it gives you an opportunity to be reflective about your own reality in contrast to somebody else's. And that's, It gave me a lot of gratitude. A hundred percent. It takes me back to a place of, like, I'm thankful for my life. Um, but I... I think storytelling is one of the most powerful mediums that we have at our disposal. So I like to be able to share stories that are super informative, that, you know, kind of give you a different perspective and a different way to look at stuff and really can respect, you know, somebody's journey. Because you may not agree with somebody's journey, but the nuance of understanding their story and who they are and what they've been up against, you can, you know, it's like you, I just have mad respect for her, really, because I, I feel like she is a soldier out here. I probably, I mean. I don't know how, I mean. I, I suppose, like, whatever happens to you, you just try to get through it. Like, and yeah. she's just had a harder row to hoe than I would say most people. Road to hoe. But I, I love her perspectives. I love her passion. You know, that, that tends to be another yeah. theme about, like, because she's very passionate about reading. She's passionate about cooking. She's, she's passionate about her babies. Like, she was very... Um, Mother Earth. Very Mother Earth. <laughs> yeah. Like she's... Um, and you can be all of those things as a woman. You can start off as an abused person. You can be raped. You can be sexual. You can experience violence in, uh, in your life. And you can you and you and can at the same time be a mom and reclaim, you know, reclaim your life and... And then when you get on... Find you, joy. And then you... And then... Because she's married to a white man, too. That's oh, yeah, funny she to me. Is. Yeah, she ended up marrying a white man, um, a white Jewish man. She said after she had her kids, it didn't matter as much to her. It didn't matter her. as much. Which I kind of respect that. It's like already procreated, so... She's like, and, ne- cool. and, black, and these niggas ain't checking for me. <coughs> Not even a little. Too black, remember? Too black. Remember? Once again, because she was on Twitter for a while and had a Twitter beef with Kamora Lee Simmons because she was having sex with Digimon. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, oh, because that was... A- <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Have you not gotten to that part? No. Is that at the very end, or did I miss that? I feel or like it's, I it's in the book. I- I'm sure it is. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah she... Um, on her- <laughs> no, I, the Twitter beef, I, won't, I, won't, I don't I remember that. I don't remember the Twitter she, part. I don't, she didn't talk about the Twitter beef in the book, but she That's talks about her... About. Um, um, her about that. about Kamora Lee Simmons yeah. and why she hates her. And how she's... Uh, she's like, I'm basically cuter than her, too. And she's like, I'm <laughs> cuter than her. My vagina's better. Digimon told me. And... Oh, shit. She, Damn. She's <laughs> shots for... Dra, dra, dra. It was... Sh- shots it was fired spicy, this man. But she was... Really, ah. She really did not... <laughs> she did not care for Kamora at all. Yeah, so... Uh, or Russell. She got into a Russell a little bit, too. It's, yeah, it was just a good book, y'all. Y'all got to read this book. Y'all got to check it out. Um, like we said, you probably can't find it in print, but you might be able to find it on an ebook. Um, and if you're like me and didn't even get a chance to finish it, I think if, even if you start the book or even if this is the only introduction you have oh, to it. she also had brain cancer. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, it just keeps, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, again, get the book. That's that's basically because this will do this. And now it at this will. Point, it's, yeah. it's so good. It's so dense. And it comes better. Like, when you read it, you're really creating the picture. You know, like us chopping the book up or whatever, like, re- re-remembering. Again, like, it's hard because it's been over the course of three weeks. But, I mean, you'll be highly entertained. You will not be disappointed. You're definitely going to enjoy this book. So if I had to give it a rating probably out of five, I would give it a five for just her style, like, her style of writing. Um... And just the way she shared her stories were her, it's super brave. Po- yeah, it's it was super crazy brave, brave to, be that to speak your truth. Yeah, absolutely. So shout out to all the storytellers. Oh, this is this is I meant to this at the beginning though, but like, who are some of your favorite writers? Some of my favorite writers. Yeah. Um, I would probably say Alice Walker definitely because she's got some classics. Um, 
James Baldwin. I mean, his essays are super powerful. Plus, I love seeing him. Um, I like seeing him in life. I always like watching his videos of his talks and he has he just style. His, his yeah, like he's so elegant and well spoken. I mean, he was just an orator. So I, I enjoy him too. I would say those are two of my faves. Um, but yeah, I like Michelle Obama's book. I don't know if she has somebody help her write it, but her book was really, really good too. She's she's probably. She's one so of the smart. best communicators of I mean, our time. Listen, and this is actually, this is another reason why I wanted to do this because it's, I don't know that it's my strong point. I like to do it, but I'd like to be better at it because I do that. I think that it's super important for all of us to be the storytellers of our own lives and speaking our own truths. And I want my kids to feel empowered to do that. And I don't know, that's how you connect with people. You know, I like genuine experiences. So when you really sit down with somebody and you get down to like their truth and what their story is, it's what connects us, you know, and it humanizes us. And I think that a lot of that, a lot, like the storytelling aspect would do a lot of healing, especially for what's happening right now. Like if you had an opportunity to really sit down and hear people's stories, somebody different from you, I feel like that's what ends up, that's how you find the humanity in, you know, the people around you. So I won't be able to find who said it, but one of the quotes, someone she quoted in her book said, um, silence will not save us. No. Your silence will not save you. So, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah get good at telling so your story. So, shout out to all the people who've ever been, you know, victims of any kind of, like, you know, sexual abuse or violence. Because, I mean, we've joked, I joked around, my bad. I mean, not, it's not funny. That's how I deal with stuff like that, to process it. But, you know, shout out to all the survivors out here because shit, shit ain't sweet. It's, it, it's not. And your body belongs to you. I feel like that can't be said enough. I don't think I ever got that message enough when I was younger. Like, your body belongs to you. You get Amen. to do what you it's your doing stuff machine. It's what you get to go through with life. You should love it. And it belongs to you. That's right. And so on that note, guys, I think we're going to wrap this up. No, no, we got to pick no. another book. Do we? Yep. Oh, got to pick okay, the next look. book. So we're going to spin this wheel. And it looks like we're going to be, once again, a, a story of survival, uh, Rabbit by Miss Pat. Oh, my God, Miss Pat. Yeah. I love her. I haven't read it yet. to her podcast. I haven't read it yet either. <sighs> so it'll be fun. We get to read it together. I know. I'm so excited. This will be the first one we actually read together because I've okay. read this one before, so I kind of knew what was coming. Sure. But this will be wholly new, even though I know some of her story from listening to her podcast. Yeah, I just started um, listening to her podcast, and she is fucking hilarious. Miss Pat, Pat. Yeah, man. Yeah, she's... yeah, speaking of a survivor, like, I got a lot of respect. <laughs> For her yeah, She's once again, that's hell. her story. Um, so, yeah, hers is called Rabbit. We'll be getting that to next time. Thank you so much. I know, this thank, was fun, Thank you. Guys. Thank you for listening. Um, we for hope you enjoy. Here. We hope we um, can get you guys to come back and hang out with us again. Uh, and even been if real. you don't, we'll be here. That's true. We're coming back anyway. We're still going to be here. this is our excuse to yeah, have a reason why. So. I consume books. Yeah, ma'am. All right, we out. I think that was everything. Before we go, we must give thanks to our sound engineer, Eric Dizzy from Dorian Keith Media, to Urban Nerd for providing our music, Buzz Viral Marketing runs our social media, and legal services were handled by Trazen A.M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake-ass book club. Cheers. Cheers! Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the Fake Ass Book Club. We out.